We were at Earl's Court a little while ago doing what we do on stage and uh, we bumped into a company called Gill Kicker who make this piece of machinery and this is a roof for a pergola and it can be used for protecting you from the rain or when it opens to allow the sunshine through to your patio or wherever you want to put it. It's a fantastic piece of design, obviously the louvers fit into these brackets and this, these brackets fit onto a louver beam and the louver beam goes on top of your pergola. If you've got uh, the kind of pergola that you'd like to uh, do this yourself with, you can fit a couple of right angle brackets to the top of your pergola and the roof beam simply fits in between. Um, if you don't have a pergola and you'd like one, um, the guys will be happy to build you one. And if they build you one, the chances are that they'll use a different method of fixing, and that's to drop these louver beams into notches in the pergola they build. And that's the method that we're going to show you today on how, the, how easy this thing is to put together. Um, and there's John, Dave and Andy, they're going to come in in a moment and they're going to fit this. And then once it's fit, it doesn't take long to fit at all, whether they do it or whether you do it yourself. And then I'm going to come back in and we'll ask them a few questions and we'll be able to work out why... This, this roofing idea is doing so much better than the others on the market. So guys, over to you. Okay, before we start to uh, fit the new thing that Mike has just showed you, it's worth just spending a little bit of time um, to explain one of the key elements of the functionality of this roof is to make sure that each of the new beams are fitted parallel with each other, like the tracks on a railway uh, system. The reason for doing that is because when the louvers are opened and closed, if the beams are parallel with each other, it just makes the whole operation so much easier and will give you a much longer lasting roof. It's an easy thing to do, spend a bit of time just putting a tape onto the pergola structure just to find out where the centre points are um, so that you can identify the exact centre of the pergola which may or may not be square but it just gives you the best start to your project. This particular roof has two louver beams on it because the louvers are quite short in length. Other pergola structures which require wider louvers may have two, three, four or even up to five louver beams um, to be used. Key thing as again, again, keep them parallel with each other. The rain of course was in danger of severely damaging some very, very expensive camera equipment. Uh, not to mention me. Um, that's the, uh, the main reason that we brought it indoors. Okay, we've just dropped the louver beam into the recesses that have been cut into the pergola structure for it. Um, we measured out and spaced that they're in the right place, of course. A little tip when you're fitting your own beams, this little gizmo that's moving along the beam that you can see, is the uh, support bracket for the open, opening and closing bar mechanism. Slide these onto the bottom of the rail before you put the beam onto the pergola. It just makes life a little bit easier. Just move the louver brackets into the open position because now what we want to do is to identify where we want the turning handle to go that's going to operate the mechanisms. That can go anywhere you wish on your structure. There's not a fixed position for it. So on this particular roof, we're probably going to put the uh, bar about that distance in from the end of the structure. What we're going to do in a moment is we're going to introduce the um, turning bar and also the adjuster that's going to open and close the roof system. Each of the support brackets has a very um, tidy o-ring that clips onto the side of it and you can see that's just done quite simply clipped on like that and one on the other side as well okay. this is the open and closing turning bar which we've already cut to length um, and this will sit with inside the rails of the pergola so you could leave it about 30 mil short either end what we're going to do now is to insert the opening and closing bar into the opening and closing bar brackets. To do that we simply lift the beam out
feed the bar through, lift the other beam up, feed the bar through, and then drop it down into position again. The other problem with moving it indoors is that it's made the legs a little bit wobbly because we couldn't secure them properly. This is only a demonstration, it isn't the real pergola. Please bear with us, the idea is it's a wonderful roof. I'm going to move the ladder now because I need to remove one of the links in the top um, and I, to do that safely I need to get the ladder in another position. This is the adjuster that's used um, to open and close the louvers. This particular part replaces the links that run along the top of the louver beam. So in a moment I'm going to remove one of the links and I'm going to introduce this in place of the link. What we're removing now we're removing these very small two-piece rivets. They just pull apart very simply. Okay. Now, once we've removed those rivets, we can move these controlling arms out of the way and lift the brackets out, uh, the links out of the big problem. Yep. What you'll notice with these links is one goes over the other one. When we put this mechanism in place, this particular part sits on top of both of the links. So you don't need to worry about feeding one under the other. Simply feed it through, put it down over the nylon bush, put it back on, get the controlling arms back in place. And there we are. So that's the adjuster fitted to the top of the light and shade beam. So first thing to do is take another one of these black plastic O-rings, put that onto the opening and closing turning bar. That acts as the spacer for the adjuster. The adjuster simply slots over the open and closing turning bar, move it up gently against the O-ring that we've just positioned, and then we use this bolt assembly to clamp it into place onto the open and closing turning bar. Don't worry that this is moving now, you can see it's moving. That's not a problem yet because we've not tightened anything up. Okay, you can see now the adjuster is fully extended. The louvers clips are fully in the opening position. That's very important to remember. We've got the opening and closing bar support bracket nicely positioned, and then we can tighten up the bracket which supports the opening and closing turning bar. That's simply done using a 13 mil spanner again. That clamps the plates inside the channel to the bracket itself. And then to tighten the adjuster onto the opening and closing turning bar, one more 13 mil spanner, one on the top, one on the bottom. Simply clamp them together and that clamps it nice and tightly onto the opening and closing turning bar. These are tightened nicely now. I'm going to replicate the same process on the other louver beam. So I'll go over there. Unfortunately, my back has to be to the camera, but you'll see me doing the same thing.
This is the handle that we now attach to the opening and closing bar, and that helps us get enough leverage on the bar just to close the roof and open the roof when we need it to happen. So, normally, this would be positioned um, closer to the house, where people would come out of the house and open and close the roof nice and easy. Just for the purpose of this film, we'll probably put it at the front so that you can see it more clearly. And this simply sits onto the bar again, and you can see by hardly any effort at all, that opens and closes the roof. John's going to hold that. All we do again, simple nut and bolt assembly, nothing too high tech. I'm going to hold the handle past the nuts and bolts to John, and he'll clamp those on the other side. We'll tighten the handle in a minute, just in case um, we decide it's not in the right position. But you can see very simply, closing the roof, opening the roof, closing the roof, opening the roof. We're going to fit some of the louvers now. So give us a second, we'll bring some louvers into shot, we'll show those to you, and then we'll show you how they fix onto the louver clips on the light and shade beams. This is the profile of the louver. You can see it's shaped like an S or a clay pantile. And it's that profile that gives the roof its weather tightness and weather security. The way that the louver fits onto the brackets that are fitted, or the louver clips that are fitted onto the roof, is very, very simple. It's offered up into the louver clip like that, squeezed, clipped into place. And that's repeated all the way along the roof until all the louvers are in position. If at any stage you ever need to get above your pergola to do some work or maintenance on your own, it's very simple to reverse the process, unclip the louver, then you have access between the louvers to get a ladder up against the wall. It's just a handy thing to think about um, for the future. The louvers we manufacture are made in two materials. The first and the most widely used is powder coated aluminium. Powder coating because it's extremely durable, um, aluminium because it's non-ferrous, it's designed to go outside in all weathers. Um, we can paint these in virtually any round colour that you wish. So there's a lot of flexibility and a lot of choice there for you. The other finish that we make in our louvers is in 6mm twin wall polycarbonate. Now this is useful where people want to keep light coming into a canopy area when the roof is um, in the closed position. Most of the roofs that we do, I say, are aluminium, but we do supply polycarbonate as it does give a high degree of flexibility when people are thinking about the options for their pergola. So we're going to go on and fix some of the louvers now. Um, we'll clip them into position and then you'll see the roof um, with all the louvers on, fully operational. Feed into the lever clips, put the bottom in first, clip, click. A nice sound where it clicks solidly into place, everything's good. A 
The final thing we want to show you is um, we're not going to fix all of the louvers fully in position as you would on a, um, your own pergo at home because we have to dismount this. But as you've seen, the louvers go into place like that, clip into place like that. The final thing to do is to take a pair of these pliers, put some protection on here, just a piece of cloth or a piece of paper, put this over there, gently squeeze it and turn it over. That then crimps the louver into position on the louver clip and makes it very, very weather secure. Um, it's a very easy process to do, it takes a few seconds um, and is well worth the effort. Okay, last thing to get before the roof fully, is fully operational. We fix the drawer strings. John's going to do that because John is top, taller than I am. At the moment we're using um, just some conventional, well actually very durable um, cord with uh, a spherical ball on the end. This one is made of walnut, we can do them in high impact resin. Alternatively, if these aren't required, some people use like uh, a janitor's pole, the sort of thing you would use to open and close um, a Velux window or something of that nature. But this is a perfectly functional way of doing it. Some of our customers have used chain, um, have used ceramic um, balls on the end, even used the cord pulls from old loos. Um, you can do whatever you wish to do. Now you can see the roof is closing down and opening, closing down and opening. And you can see the S-shaped louvers interlocking with each other, which gives it a great deal of weather security. That in tandem with the incline that needs to be on the roof, um, we, we like a minimum incline or a minimum pitch of three degrees. The water then runs off the roof um, very, very effectively. Okay, so there you can see fully functioning light and shade outdoor roof system, opening and closing just as it should, giving you all the protection from the, the sun, and on a day like today, the rain that you'll need. Thank you. Brilliant. Cheers. So while I was watching you filming, I made a few notes, did my best during that writing. Mm. But, but the first thing is, as um, Andy mentioned, we were set to do this outside. This is where it belongs outside, but then it started hammering down with rain, so we had to quickly move inside. So we're in one of our yards, so apologies for all the bits and pieces hanging around, but at least we've given you the idea of how this works. Um, that's, that's the first thing. Now, clearly, if, if somebody's gonna DIY this job, what sort of time? I mean, it's taken you probably 30 minutes. Mm -hmm from start to finish. I know we've stopped a couple of times to have a chat, but what would you honestly expect to DIY? How long would you expect that to take then? Uh, about a, a roof this size, if you've never done it before, about an hour to hour and a half um, yeah. is as long as it's going to take. All the moving parts are fitted in the factory and it's cut to size yeah. in the factory. So it can be any size at all, but there's none of the moving parts that need to be fitted by <coughs> our customers. They're all fitted oh. by us. Um, and then it's just as you saw throughout the video, uh, uh, an assembly really, following the instructions which Andy has described, um, follow that process and a roof this size would take about an hour and a half. A larger roof would take all longer obviously, but it's not, it's not, it's not a two day job. It's a, no, it's a, it's a simple, well I mean you can see from the video that it's not the most complex thing to put together. But you touched on size there, which was one of my questions, is that, you know, we're in a rectangle, pergola, you know, and to be honest, this is purpose built for this demonstration. I mean, it, it is obviously going to fit somebody's roof somewhere or somebody's house somewhere, but people aren't going to have exactly this shape. So, so how do we go? Who does the measuring? What, how does that process work if you've got a more complex structure? Gen generally, what would happen in the first instance is um, a customer would, would send us a photograph, would send us um, a sketch of dimensions, that sort of thing. We can then give an indication of, of if it's going to be feasible, feasible, mm -hmm. how's the best way to do the project give them an indication of cost, you know, yeah. that sort of thing. And then if that's, you know, all acceptable, then we'd, we'd certainly go out and do a proper site measure um, right. before we went okay. into manufacture, because, you know, it would be unfair, you know, to expect anybody to take yeah, that, that, sort of, that, that, that sort of responsibility. That's what I was thinking, because, yeah. you know, you want one little mistake and, and it just doesn't slot together, as, no. as we've seen this slot together, obviously. Mm -hmm. And obviously, that's if, it, if it's um, freestanding, it's fine, but if it's next to someone's house and they've got a chimney dress, or a bay window, so then we come, we, we come and measure and we, we yeah. make sure it fitted around all those obstructions oh. and things like so that. So it's really versatile then, it's not just a question it's got to be a, a rectangle and that's the that's end of that, it can be pretty much any shape you like. Yeah. And as I think you touched on earlier on, you can extend this 
with three, four, five beams. Absolutely. So yeah, yeah so it could be big as like. Because I, I mean, I've got I've got written down shapes here, so presumably we can do L shapes and that sort of stuff as well. Yeah, uh, that, that's superb. Cleaning. I, now I've seen it. Mm. It's obvious, isn't mm. it? You can clean it from inside or, or whatever. That that's not a problem. Put, at all. put your swimming costume on. Yeah. Get yourself a pair of washer and pair of washer off. Absolutely. And where where do you think your biggest customer base is? I mean, it's obviously a domestic product. I mean, it can go over any patio or decking or whatever. But there must be commercial uses for it as well. So if we, you know, anybody's watching that owns a pub or whatever, what? You know, where where can this be used on a commercial level? Yeah, I mean, most of the commercial projects we do. Um, use a, a remote control with an electric motor for opening and closing because they want to have the control of how open it is or how closed it is yeah. from behind the bar. Yeah. Um, and, and there they may have two or three different sections opening and closing, so yeah. customers in that corner can be in the shade, other customers can be in the, the sunlight while they're eating or, or drinking or whatever. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, perfectly possible to have a remote control with electric motor version yeah. at home, but that's just so simple. Yeah. You know, most people think, why would I go to the expense? Um, but for commercial projects, nursery schools, pubs, restaurants, yeah, they usually have the electronic motor um, with remote control, but yeah. equally they can have it like this as yeah. well. Well, I was, I was going to ask you about how susceptible, how vulnerable this is to high winds and everything until I saw you just print the last, mm. print, so that's answered my question, you know, so yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's going to be really stable. It, it is very, very stable. I mean, we've got stuff sort of installed in West Wales, up in North East Scotland, down in southern Spain, um, right. over where Dave is in Dublin. Yeah. Um, so, it, you know, if it's done properly and, and everybody will do it properly, it yeah. works fine. Oh, so brilliant. Fine. <coughs> the, the last thing, thing is, the thing it suddenly thing. occurred to me while you were speaking, is that what about having a look at uh, instead of louvers? Well, it, with louvers, but having solar panel louvers. Yep. The thing to remember there is that um, the orientation of the sun is important. I mean, yeah. we can make the louvers open and close four ways: that way, that way, that way, or that yeah. way. If you're looking for the maximum shade from the sun, and we laminate PV cells onto the outside of the louvers, um, you've got to remember that if they're opening away from the sun. They're yeah, not sure. going to get the most um, the yeah. most sunlight, which yeah. makes the payback longer. Yeah. If they're opening towards the sun, then that's fine. So if you want the maximum shade underneath the daylight and blocking the sunlight, then we'd open them away from the sun right. and vice versa. So yeah, it does work, but you've got to remember you've that you, could, you could end up having a really long payback because you're, when, you, when your roof is open, it, yeah. the, the PV cells are always in the shade. Yeah, cool. Yeah. And I interrupted you, you were just about to say something. I was just going to say something about wind, actually. Um, the worst that will happen, if the roof's closed and a gale comes along and you haven't locked the, the roof off, the worst that's going to happen is it will blow open and then the wind resistance is gone. Yeah, of course. So it's going to just yeah. travel through, the wind's not going to, yeah. there's nothing to catch. It's like leaving a tower crane unlocked, you allow the jib to swing with the wind. I, yeah. I, I wouldn't know that, mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's what happens. Another thing, just thought of. The water hits the roof, it runs off on the three degree incline that we've spoken about. What about guttering and stuff? Uh, well, guttering, we can put a gutter on it, that's no problem at all. Um, to down pipes, to water butts or soakaways. We can also uh, cover the gutter with a fascia yeah. from an aesthetic point of view. That just looks much neater from the yeah, front. Yeah, sure, sure. And um, that's been done on many projects really, before. So just the same as any kind of flat roof, really. Absolutely. Just put the gutter in yeah. and take it to a downpipe. Pretty yeah. No worries at all. Yeah, the, the very last thing is that um, what you saw us doing on the video was dropping these louver beams into pre-cut slots. Those slots are, are dead easy to cut. If you look on the DIY Doctor website, you can see how to cut. Uh, how to make timber joins and you'll see how to cut those slots nice and neat and square to the pergola itself. Um, so that's it really, we, we love it, DIY Doctor loves it, it's why these guys are here. Um, sorry about the rain, um, pattering away on the roof, but um, it, it's one of those products that when you look at it and you think, my word, that is so simple but so effective. So put your order in today.